Hello, my name is Zug Gehre and welcome to Hugo's Desk. Today, let's review the BenQ PD2700U from a professional point of view. But even before we start, let's cut to the chase. A professional 10-bit monitor is pretty expensive. Most of them cost up towards to 1,000 to 2,000 pounds. So a lot of my students and sometimes even artists starting out ask me, do I need a 10-bit monitor? Well, with a price point of just above 400 pounds, featuring most of the professional characteristics only found on a BenQ top-line monitor, not to mention, don't forget, the recent release of the 10-bit support from NVIDIA GTX cards. Yeah, I think yes. You probably should get a 10-bit display. I think now is the time. It will really improve your workflow and really allow you to achieve proper color fidelity on all your projects. With this in mind, is the BenQ PD2700U the perfect monitor for a student or an artist on a budget? Well, let's find out. Full disclosure, BenQ did provide this monitor for review, but I can assure you my channel is completely unbiased and this is going to be an honest analysis of the display. I've been working as an artist for 20 years in some of the biggest visual effects houses in the world, including as visual effects supervisor at The Mill London. Color is extremely important to me since I work in IN visual effects, CG, editorial, compositing and graving. I have been testing this monitor with my own professional projects for over six months now. So this review will be from a professional point of view. BenQ kind of says that this is a great monitor for designers, but I kind of think that it's more than just for designers. It also works for editors, for CG artists, compositors. It's a really versatile monitor. Right out of the box, my first impressions are pretty positive. We have an edge-to-edge -edge monitor, which is great for dual, or even if you're nuts, you can have a triple monitor setup. And not to mention the great daisy chain capability so that you can kind of basically connect monitor to monitor, really, really allowing you not to have a lot of cables going into your desktop. It has such great black levels, making this monitor excellent to watch films, to watch Netflix, or even to play games. It supports HDR, making it really cool for future-proofing your workflow. The colors really pop and the dynamic range is very impressive. You still can't really work in HDR properly on Windows or Mac OS. There's a lot of lack of support for third-party apps, but the day is coming, I can assure you. HDR is definitely the future of computer displays or TV screens. For now, having HDR means I can kind of chill and relax and play some PS4 Pro, play some Xbox One X, while waiting for those long 3D renders or when I'm exporting a long edit. The menu is really easy to reach, it's on the bottom of the monitor, but I'm really missing the puck. I know it's a feature of more expensive BenQ monitors, but I'm so used to the puck these days that when I'm using a menu button, I just feel so old school. But I guess there's a reason, you know, it's a cheaper price point, so I can understand it. In the menu, you will find all the professional settings you can ever wish for. It has complete control over every aspect of the image from individual color controls at RGB level you have manual settings of gamma sharpness and I'm just mentioning a few it's great to see gamma settings from 1.8 to 2.6 this really makes this monitor pretty cool for grading on very dark environments at the gamma 2.4 the monitor can also rotate 90 degrees for all your programming needs or if you want to preview really large photo galleries like, you know, reference textures or anything like that. Of course, you can also take advantage of this feature for web browsing. Imagine if you want to look at a really big page or, you know, Facebook or Twitter. But check this out. How cool is this? If you rotate the monitor, the menu even rotates to match the orientation of the screen. I was working with Nuke with this 90 degree setup and it's pretty awesome. I can have all this vertical screen to work with all my nodes. It's really cool as a secondary screen if you already have a bigger display. If I really want to geek out, I can even play some Ikaruga vertically on my Nintendo Switch. It is pretty cool. Dual view is an excellent way to preview different LUTs, for example, for different deliveries. Let's say, for example, you're delivering a project for both TV, Rex 09, or sRGB for the web. So now you can actually look at that file with just a split screen with a LUT and basically have two LUTs, one on each side. Using it as a full screen monitor for compositing in Nuke or editing on DaVinci is pretty amazing. The amount of real estate you have on a 4K display is massive. This means you can really preview all your high resolution photos at almost one to one, or you can even edit 4K at native resolution. It's also a great display to use as a cheap reference monitor. I mean, at this price point, it's a great way to preview your edits on DaVinci, Final Cut X, Premiere, even look at here, I'm, I'm using a Blackmagic Decklink to output a true HDR signal as a reference monitor. 
In terms of specs, the monitor is a 27-inch 4K EPS display with 350 nits LED backlight. I already know what you're thinking, and we had this conversation on other reviews. Only 300 nits for HDR? Well, because this is a professional 10-bit display, they usually have fewer nits than, a, let's say, a regular 8-bit TV. If you really need 500 or 1,000 nits on a 10-bit reference monitor, then you're really looking to pay 5,000 pounds for an Enzo or an Apple Pro Display XDR. But I guess if you really have the budget, you can always get a Sony 3 Master OLED, but that could cost 33,000 pounds. I mean, just imagine that. It, you can buy 87 BenQ monitors like this with that money. Of course, I'm just kidding, jokes aside, this is a 10-bit display with 1.07 billion colors. It has a PPI of 163. The pixels are super sharp and you can really see the eye density of the monitor when I use a macro lens. I love my macro lens, so I'm always using it whenever I'm reviewing monitors. I always have to put it in. It has a native contrast at 1300 to 1, a 5 millisecond response time at a maximum refresh rate at 60 Hz. Again, keep in mind this is a 10-bit display. It's built for accuracy, not refresh rate. In terms of connectivity, it includes one HDMI 2.2 capable of HDR10, one DisplayPort 1.4, one Mini DisplayPort 1.4. Also has the typical USB port and a DisplayPort out, which is really cool because that's when you can actually do daisy chaining to other monitors. It weighs 5.5 kilos without the stand and 7.7 .7 kilos with the stand. As we saw before, it can pivot 90 degrees, but it can also swivel left and right 45 degrees and has a tilt of 10 degrees down and 20 degrees up. By the way, I have to say, the stand is included in the box. I am looking at you, Apple. It includes a proper KVM switch to use with two computers and a single mouse and keyboard. This is really crucial if you have a very limited space or a small office. The monitor is 100% Rex 9, 100% sRGB, and it includes multiple color space profiles for all your design, editorial, CG, and visual effects needs. It has Rex 9 if you are using video broadcast, it has sRGB for web-based projects, HDR for high dynamic range, even a CAD mode offering great contrast and detail for really thin lines, even an animation mode, you know, providing you some extra levels of brightness, bringing out really all those nuances on your animation. And this, all of this even on ambient lighting. Low blue light, which is a really, really cool feature. You know, it's really good for when you have really fatigued eyes, you know, when you're really tired. This mode is especially useful if you're, for example, using it for just reading a document or browsing the web. This is really when you don't need color accuracy and you're just doing something else, like checking your email. And dark room is excellent for really clarity and sharp details, you know, especially when you're working in photography. It also includes, of course, a customer user profile, so you can make your own calibration, you can make your own settings. Speaking of calibration, this monitor is factory calibrated, even brings a really fancy report in the box. Monitor looks super clean, and I don't see any marks or uniformity issues at all. Color reproduction looks great. I was using a color bar generator to check every single color. I checked all RGB and SMIC colors. The monitor really seems to be spot on. I was testing it with an X-Rite, and the uniformity test gave me around 5% deviation on the edges, which I really think it's a really pretty good range, you know, like, and at this price range, I can't really ask for more. The Kalman quality test gives me around 0.4 of average delta. Just to confirm, I also tested the display using X-Rite i1 profiler software. Gives me a very similar results with an average of 0.41 and a maximum of 2.2. Very impressive results, I think. Again, this is a great value, especially since anything below 2 is considered really good color fidelity. The factory report gives me a 0.3 average delta, but, you know, they're using a much more expensive measuring device. You know, they're using a, a Minolta CA310. I don't have money for that. I'm just using a cheap X-Rite like everyone else uses, and I'm really not expecting to get the same results as perfect factory conditions. In conclusion, let's start with the cons. No puck. I guess I'm really now spoiled with all my other BenQ monitors. The menu buttons are a little hard to reach. I wish they were on the front and not at the bottom. No HDR manual controls means that it makes it a bit hard for me to calibrate it as a reference monitor. Only one HDMI, I really have a problem with this. I wish it had at least two or three HDMIs. 
also missing a shading hood to block all the lights in the sun. It also doesn't support HDR10 Plus or Dolby Vision, but Dolby Vision is pretty expensive. You need to kind of pay a royalty to Dolby to actually have it. The monitor gets a little hot on the lower panel, but you know, I, I basically measured it with a temperature camera. I got about 36 degrees after about an hour of use. I think it's okay. I mean, only time will tell if this makes any changes to the fidelity of the monitor. I guess I will only know in a couple of years. It's a real shame that the dual view doesn't have vertical mode. I would have loved to have top and bottom images. And finally, I'm really missing hardware calibration. Keep in mind that most of these cons are really the reason why the monitor is so much cheaper than, let's say, a PD3220 or an SW271. I mean, I can't really expect any miracles. It's the old story of good, fast, and cheap. You can only pick two. On the pro side, this is one of the cheapest 4K 10-bit monitors out there. I mean, it's just above 400 pounds. The x right gives me around 0.4 of average delta. Anything below two is great. It has both HDMI 2.0, and DisplayPort 1.4. They're both capable of 444, 10-bit 4K at 60 Hz. We have an edge-to-edge -edge design, which is really great to have it a monitor side by side. It has a handle on the back, I kid you not. This is a great feature. I really hoped all monitors had it, especially when you're like traveling around on a company and you have to move the monitor around, you're gonna love to have a handle. It also supports HDR10. The monitor is also Kalman and Pantone validated. And let's not forget the eye care function. For someone that has a lot of eye problems, this is absolutely amazing. In conclusion, this is a great monitor from BenQ. Either if you're using it as a single desktop for all your professional creative work, or even as an extended desktop, you know, to support the second monitor, it's a great display. It feels slick, it's responsive, it has all the necessary color profiles you need, you know, if you're working in design, if you're working in 3D, if you're working in compositing, or even editorial work. I mean, it can even be used as a really cheap grading reference monitor. So if you already have another monitor you're using, you can just use this one as a secondary monitor. I think it's a great display for entry-level editors, CG artists, designers, or compositors. Or <laughs> if you're a monitor enthusiast on a budget. Of course, if you're interested in more expensive range from BenQ, maybe you can look at my other two reviews. I recently reviewed this monitor's big brother, you know, the 32-inch PD3220. And if you want even more, if you won't need like, you know, hardware calibration or photography precision, then you can also check out my review to the BenQ SW271. I hope you enjoyed my review. Please leave a comment, share, subscribe to Hugo's Desk, and don't forget to hit the little bell. Until next time, and stay positive.